Good evening and good morning, colleagues, students, and friends. Welcome to SOAS China Institute Research Seminar. Uh, my name is Xiaoning Lu, and I am a reader in modern Chinese culture and language at SOAS. I'm very delighted to chair today's webinar delivered by Professor Gen Song. Uh, Dr. Gen Song is a professor in the School of Chinese, University of Hong Kong. He has written extensively on topics such as men and masculinities in East Asia, Chinese television and Chinese nationalism. His monographs include Televising Chineseness, Gender, Nation and Subjectivity, published by the University of Michigan Press in 2022, Men and Masculinities in Contemporary China, published by Brill in 2014, and the Fragile Scholar, Power and Masculinity in Chinese Culture, published by Hong Kong University Press in 2004. I'd like to mention that the Chinese translation of the Fragile Scholar, titled Wen Ruo Shu Shen, Zhongguo Wenhua Yu Jing Zhong, Cai Zi de Quan Li Yu Nan Xing Qi Gai, was translated, uh, was released last year by Hong Kong University Press. Uh, its translator, Dr. Zhou Rui, was once a visiting scholar at the Department of East Asian Languages and Cultures here at the SOAS. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Professor Song is the co-editor of several books on contemporary Chinese masculinities and a televisual culture, including Chinese television in the 21st century and the cosmopolitan dream, transnational Chinese masculinities in a global age. He also co-edits a book series on transnational Asian masculinities for Hong Kong University Press. In today's webinar, Professor Song will speak for about 50 minutes, followed by Q&A. Uh, if you'd like to raise questions or make comments, please use the Q&A box at the bottom of the Zoom. If you'd like to stay anonymous, you're welcome to do so, uh, but it would be very helpful if you could provide information as to who you are. This will help Professor Song understand where the questions are coming from. Without further ado, let me hand over to Professor Song. Okay, um, thank you very much, Xiaoning, for the introduction. And uh, the honor is all mine. Uh, I've never been to SOAS, but I've been long admiring the reputation of SOAS as uh, uh, one of the leading institutions in Chinese studies. So I'm very glad to um, have this opportunity to share my research. Um, let me share my screen first. Uh, Share screen. Uh, okay. Can you can you see the PowerPoint slides? Yes, very clear. Okay, good, good, good. Um, so this talk represents a, a new trajectory of my research, and it is still at a pre preliminary stage. Um, so I'm very eager to hear your feedback and suggestions. Uh, in brief, I'm interested in exploring how AI and uh, algorithms have brought about changes to gender and history in contemporary China and how new meanings and emotional transformations are generated through this, uh, this process. Um, so maybe we could start with uh, Teresa de Loretta's book, Technologies of Gender, which was published in 1987. I believe many of you are familiar with this book. <coughs> it has now been established as a seminal work in the field of gender studies. And basically, uh, de Lo Lo Loretta argues that uh, gender or even uh, sexual difference itself is constructed by representation, right? And so the, the concept uh, of uh, technologies of gender was inspired by Foucault's term, technology of sex, which he defines as a set of techniques for maximizing life that have been developed and deployed 
by the bourgeoisie since the end of the 18th century in order to ensure its class survival and continued hegemony. And also influenced by Althusser's state, uh, state apparatus, Loretta's views cinema as a social technology or um, cinematic apparatus in which gender identity and sexual differences are constructed by representations. And so the, the, as I mentioned, this book was published in 1987. So nearly four decades have been have passed and we have seen the emergence of uh, increasingly diverse and potent technologies for regulating gender discourses. And the latest wave consists of uh, algorithms and artificial intelligence, AI, right? So in this talk, I use the, the word technology in both its literal sense and as defined by Foucault. I'm interested in finding out how technology enables effective transformations, shapes gender representation according to new liberal subjectivity and perpetuates male dominance in society. And uh, I would like to say a few words about this uh, term, digital entertainment. Uh, by digital entertainment, I'm describing a multi-platform, profit-driven entertainment ecosystem characterized by increasingly indistinct boundaries among media and genres. Okay, so the, the boundaries between like video, film, TV, uh, or even fiction have been blurred. And as you can see, a prevalent narrative pattern in today's China involves online fiction being published in installments, which upon gaining a substantial fan base is adapted into various forms of digital entertainment, such as TV dramas, web dramas, uh, short videos, animations, and games. So this is a multi-platform phenomenon. And all the examples discussed in this presentation follow this uh, trajectory. So these digital entertainment productions exhibit characteristics that signific significantly differentiate them from the previous narrative dynamics. Um, so first of all, I think we should have a look at some key factors that I think have contributed to the changes of gender representations in, 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 in today's China. And one of them, the first one is this democratization of the narration, okay? Um, as you can see in the past, storytelling was predominantly the domain of professional writers and editors who were formally recognized as propaganda workers or even human soul engineers, right? in China. However, with the democratization of technology, such as the rapid development of online literature platforms and social media, ordinary individuals can now effortlessly publish their fiction, videos, and other forms of cultural productions online gaining wide, widespread popularity. And these creative works not only embody the aspirations, fantasies, and frustrations of everyday people, but their widespread appeal has also been leveraged by platforms and entertainment production companies. So this is uh, one, one point. And another one is fan created- uh, sorry, yeah. interruption. And um, the slide is not moving. We oh. only see the title page. Oh. Um, if you can put on the slide show mode, full screen. Um, so we... I. Sh okay. Because I I could see the 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 slide in my screen, but. Oh um, uh, yeah. Now we can see the democratization of narration. This slide. Oh. Okay. So yeah. what should I do? Uh, did you set on the full screen mode? Click on the. Uh, yes. Let me see. Um, 
Maybe I stop share and try it again. Okay, yeah, it's up to you. If you, you'd like to reshare, it's fine. Yeah, okay, let me see, uh, stop share. And, uh, uh, let me share again, uh, share screen, uh, window. Okay, can you see it now? Uh, yes, we can see the slide on uh, the third slide. So it's fine. And now I move to the fourth one. Can you see it? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. On fourth one, we can see. It. So maybe I just yeah. keep this this mode yeah, instead yeah, of fine. the full screen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. And I just uh, use this. Uh, okay. Um, a, a democratization of narration. Um, so, uh, and also the, the fan created content such as um, mini dramas and short videos. Uh, exemplifies what Henry Jenkins referred to as uh, uh, convergence culture, okay, uh, where uh, old and new media collide, where grassroots and corporate media intersect, where the power of a media producer and the power of media consumer interact in unpredictable ways. And this also reminds me of uh, the term uh, semiotic democracy, uh, coined by, put forward by John Fisk. Uh, and and he, he, he described it as a world where audiences freely and widely engage in the use of cultural symbols in response to the forces of media. So a semiotic democracy enables the audience to resist, subvert, and recall uh, certain cultural symbols to express meanings that are different from the ones intended by their creators, so thereby empowering consumers rather than producers. So an immediate uh, example that come to my mind is uh, uh, a commentary uh, sharing system called the Bullet Curtain uh, or Dan Mu in, in Chinese, uh, originated uh, in Japanese ACG culture. So it's called the uh, Dan Maku in Japanese. They uh, bullet curtain enables viewers to post the comments directly on screen while watching a video online. So those watching the same program can also entertain one another and form small online communities through their viewing. Uh, many of the digital entertainment productions need to be examined in this interactive web of online culture characterized by memes, fan recreations, and games. Um, so, this, so this is one uh, factor. Another one is uh, algorithms and affective transformations. A, a prominent aspect of these stories and online content is their highly commercial nature. So the guiding principle uh, in this domain is the belief that traffic is king. Liu Liang is wrong, traffic is king. Only uh, online platforms employ uh, sophisticated algorithms to optimize user engagement. <coughs> and these algorithms in turn shape the preferences of their audience. So as a result, the content generated by writers is significantly impacted by these algori algorithmic forces. So this is a a two-way relationship, okay? And as uh, uh, Taina Barker noted, it is, not, it is not just that people do things with the help of algorithms, but using by using algorithms, they also do things to them, modulate and reconfigure them in both discursive and material ways. So it is undoubtedly true that algorithms have become a key site of power in the contemporary media scape. And this power dynamic is both disciplinary and affective, shaping not only the content we consume, but also how we interact with and respond to it. A common thread in these uh, digital entertainment productions is the incorporation of affective technological innovations, including affective computing, mood tracking, sentiment analysis, and social robotics. So in the era of the algorithmic turn, 
platform utilize automated systems to analyze users' emotional expressions and encourage specific behaviors, leading to the regulation of, of emotions. Um, so as pointed out by uh, Bakker, algorithmic recommendations dictate genres of culture by rewarding particular tropes with promotion in feeds based on what immediately attracts the most attention. And some scholars also uh, described, it, described it as uh, the culture of a filter world. The culture of a filter world is the, the culture of uh, presets, established patterns that get repeated again and again. However, at the same time, algorithmic regulation has brought forth affective transformations among the audience. So in what, I, in what follows, I will focus on this uh, productive power of uh, cultural imaginaries. Um, <clears throat> one prominent consequence of this algorithmic storytelling is the flattening of history in many online fiction and drama. This is particularly true, uh, particularly evident in popular sub, sub genres of fiction drama, such as time traveling, uh, 穿越, and uh, alternate history, uh, 架空. Rather than focusing on a specific period in Chinese history, these subgenres often depict an imagined traditional Chinese society tailored to the fantasies and desires of modern readers. And this portrayal is constructed through algorithmic calculations that tap into the collective imagination of traditional China held by the, the, the general public. So one example is uh, uh, Joy of Life, Qin uh, Yunian. This is a very popular alternate history web drama adapted from online fiction. And I think this season two of this uh, series is coming out very soon, um, maybe tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, uh, the, the second season will be released. Um, so the story unfolds in a fictional historical setting known as the uh, Nanqing, South, South Qing and the Beiqi, North Qi dynasties, which did not exist in Chinese history. Uh, however, many viewers find it to possess a sense of uh, authenticity, uh, 真, 真实, 真实性, okay? from consumers, uh, costumes and props to language and storylines, everything seems somewhat ambiguous, straddling the line between reality and fiction. Another example is My Heroic Husband. Uh, the Chinese title is Zhui Xu, so a, a web drama adaptation of the online novel Zhui Xu. And I will talk more about this, um, uh, this novel later. And the story follows a modern day Chinese businessman who finds himself transported to the fictional Wu dynasty, Wu Chao, which did not exist in Chinese history either. So in the guise of a cosmetic drama, the show functions as the business battle drama, strategically employing anachronistic modern business terminology and tactics to create comedic effects. And so the narrative is replete with uh, homophonic uh, puns that allude to the contemporary business giants, such as Pin Pin Duo Duo, uh, in the drama is Pin Dao Dao and Su Ning Yi Go, uh, which reference the prominent e-commerce platforms in, 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 in today's China. Um, so in light of this background, uh, in the following, I will discuss two case studies and then we focus on how new forms of femininity and masculinity are constructed through the appropriation of historical tropes or motifs and images that um, has been uh, handed down from, from history. And uh, so the first one is uh, uh, the so-called palace intrigue fiction and drama, uh, uh, most of these stories are set during the Manchu Qing dynasty, but studies have revealed significant deviations from historical accuracy. 
uh, as well as the presence of modern mentalities in the characters. For one thing, ideal womanhood is constructed in keeping with the entrepreneurial self, which lies at the core of uh, new liberal subject making, making. These stories celebrate women as autonomous uh, agents who can determine and change their fate through hard work and, and constant self-improvement. So the imperial concubines exemplify the entrepreneurial spirit as they must carefully assess risks and rewards to succeed in their high stakes environment. So I, I have discussed this TV drama, uh, Yanxi Gongyu, the story of the Yanxi Palace in my book, Televising Chineseness. The protagonist, Wei Yingluo, uh, her shrewdness and unwavering desire for justice have made her a target of projection for many female audience members. On social media platforms, for example, a large number of urban women who are struggling to obtain better work opportunities have identified with Yingluo's solo struggle to climb the social economic ladder and negotiate a society structured around wealth-based status and male power and, and privilege. <clears throat> so Yingluo's step-by-step elevation in the imperial concubine system resembles the upward trajectory of an employee in a modern company. So just like the, this uh, uh, table has uh, illustrated, she comes from a humble Han Chinese family and she starts her so-called career as a low ranking maid and by triumph triumphing over her enemies and gaining the emperor's affection, she moves up the ladder in the hierarchical consult system until she reaches a position second only to the empress. Um, at the same time, however, stories of independent, capable women still more or less follow the bossy CEO pattern, this Ba Dao Zhong Cai, the bossy CEO pattern, in which women's success ultimately lies in the hands of men. So, for instance, in the story of Yanxi Palace, the heroine Wei Ying Luo's success ultimately depends on the emperor. And also, I, th I think you would agree with me that she excels at taking advantage of men to achieve her goals. And the emperor Qianlong in many ways resembles the bossy CEO character. So the supreme heroines are without exception Mary Sue characters whose power to command men's support and attention is inextricably linked to their female sexuality. Another historical trope um, so this is this, this one is a, a imperial concubines, and another historical trope that I would like to discuss is the image of a matrilocal husband or zhui shu. Um, a zhui shu refers to a man who resi resigns in his wife's household after marriage, and in a patriarchal society like traditional China, such husbands usually came from modest economic and social backgrounds and were compelled to choose matrilocal residents for various reasons. And as a result, matrilocality was often considered a source of humiliation and an impediment to masculinity. <laughs> as it hinders a man's filial obligations and the duty of continuing the family lineage. So measure local husbands, sometimes derisively called male wives, faced ridicule not only from their wives, the families, and the relatives, but also from society at large. In light of a performative understanding of gender, matri locality within the Chinese space reveals anxiety and stress typically associated with the anticipation of spatially defined performance tasks. Um, in pre-modern Chinese literature, stories often satirized the masculinity of a matrilocal husband. However, recent years have witnessed 
a surge in web fiction that features the unexpected turn of fortune for these husbands. Adapted into various formats, uh, including short videos, films, TV dramas, animations, and games, this subgenre of digital entertainment has emerged as a multi-platform phenomenon. It has garnered immense popularity among male readers, particularly those from grassroots backgrounds. So these narratives tend to adhere to a formulaic pattern, um, exposing deep-rooted anxieties and fantasies surrounding manhood in the quest for an entrepreneurial self. And they target a specific sentiment, sentimental response from the audience. Um, okay, so for those who are unfamiliar with the 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 Zhui uh, Xuwen or the natural local husband uh, subgenre, uh, I'll just briefly introduce the storyline. So in these stories, the male protagonist. Uh, lives modestly with his wife's family, and uh, he is frequently belittled or scorned by her relatives and friends. And uh, normally the wife's brother uh, is particularly hostile towards him. Uh, however, when the family faces a, a crisis, the protagonist's true identity and abilities are unveiled. And uh, as he resolves the is issue, uh, he is suddenly showered with uh, adoration from his wife and uh, uh, obsequious this from her, her family. So this turning point um, is called Shuangdian, a pleasure point, offers an emotional outlet for readers who delight in witnessing the formerly disdainful family members now falling over the male protagonist. Uh, it is also called the Dalian, or slap in the face, because it's like a slap in the face for, for those uh, relatives. And this theme uh, has been so popular that it has earned the status of a subgenre in its own right. So the online novels of this subgenre were first published in installments through the male channels of various online fiction portals. The male channels are designed exclusively for male readers. And these male-oriented online, online novels tackle the crisis of masculinity in real life and indulge a diverse range of masculine fantasies. So typically, there are two narrative threads. The primary storyline revolves around the male protagonist's personal growth and success, while the secondary storyline explores the unwavering love and the loyalty shown to him by multiple women. So accordingly, there are two popular narrative subgenres in the male-oriented uh, male uh, channels. So the first one is the spirit cultivation novels, uh, which emphasize the protagonist's self-improvement and, and battles against uh, monsters uh, in, in, a, in a supernatural setting. And the uh, harem uh, novels, uh, which details the protagonist's romantic and sexual experiences with a group of women. So the Metro Local Husband novels, or Zhui Xuwen, demonstrates a combination of the two themes. Um, through entertainment and the fantasies, these novels not only align with the global agenda of a neoliberal subject formation driven by capital, but also re resonate with the official rhetoric of the Chinese dream as uh, fabulated by the Chinese state. Um, so the first uh, um, online novel of this kind is Zhui Xu, My Metro Local Husband, The Lo Metro Local Husband, okay? Uh, it was published under the pseudonym Angry Banana on Qidian.com since 2011. And it remains the most influential and well-known novel of, it, of its kind. So the novel was adapted into a TV series with the same 
title, but the English title is My Heroic Husband, as you just uh, saw, starring Guo Qilin and Song Yi. The show premiered on ITE on February 14th, 2021, and an animated film adaptation began airing on Bilibili every Sunday, starting from April 23rd, uh, 2023. Uh, in addition, the physical book, the physical version of the book, it was also published in February 2021. So this novel exemplifies a reader-oriented online novel delivering an enjoyable and escapist fantasy that imparts a calming influence on its readers. Its success has promoted a multitude of imitations. So many, many uh, online novels of this theme, focusing on this theme has been uh, published with numerous authors embracing this uh, metro locality theme. So here I have some, this is a timeline of the major works in this subgenre. Um, okay, and this is data uh, to show how popular, the popularity of this Zhui uh, Xu subgenre. Um, <clears throat> As previously, previously mentioned, the depiction of metro locality and its interaction with masculinity extends beyond a purely literary theme, encompassing a variety of multimedia formats, such as television dramas, films, animations, and videos. In fact, many people become acquainted with the metro local husband theme through short video advertisements on social media platforms. So since mid-2020, there has been a surge in short videos featuring an image known as the Rai Maust Mask, the Wai Zui Zhan Shen, or the Rai Maust Mask, uh, Maust Mask, and promoting the metro-local husband motif. So in these videos, the husband within a metro-local marriage initially experiences humiliation at the hands of his wife's family. However, a surprising turn of event transpires when he is encircled by a group of people and then changes into a formidable figure, such as the Dragon King. And this dramatic transformation leaves the wife's family astounded. At this pivotal juncture, the male protagonist exhibits a distinctive Nike smile, or the Rai Mouse the smile, just like this one, signifying a plot twist and a sinister retaliation. So this has become a signature of, of this type of stories. Uh, this video typically spans about one minute with the climax unfolding towards the conclusion. And at the end of the promotion, at the end of it, a promotional link is displayed, allowing viewers to delve deeper into the narrative by reading the associated online novels. So, as I mentioned, uh, this is a multi-platform uh, phenomenon. So we have um, here this a, a list of. Uh, the uh, multimedia adaptations uh, like uh, web drama, web movie, comics, animation, uh, radio drama, or um, uh, audio books and, and games. So this is a, a far from exhaustive list of uh, uh, adaptations of, uh, of, of this type of stories. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so um, I would like to, uh, because we still have uh, um, plenty of time, so let me talk a little bit more about uh, this, um, uh, the male protagonist, Ning Yi, in this web drama. So I'm, I'm focusing on the, the web drama, not the online novel, uh, My Heroic Husband. Um, my heroic husband revolves around the life of a modern day entrepreneur who finds himself trapped in the body 
of a young man named Ningyi from a fictional Wu dynasty. So he's from, Ningyi is from a poor family and he's forced to become a live-in son-in-law to the Su family, the, 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 this woman's family. And <coughs> they are silk, mer uh, silk merchants family in Jiangning in order to repay his father's debt. And his wife, Su Tang Er, is a gifted only daughter of the Su family's eldest branch. But her talents are held back by her gender because she's a, she's a woman. So her uncle and cousin covet the family's wealth and constantly make life difficult for Su Tang Er. And in order for her to inherit the family business and manage the cloth trade legitimately, Su Tang Er and Ning Yi enter into a contract. So once Su Tang Er obtains the Su family's seal, uh, which is a symbol of power to run the family business, Ning, Ning Yi will regain his freedom. Thus the pair become con contractual husband and wife as they work together to grow the family business and combat their uncle's schemes, however, uh, Su Tang er becomes increasingly attracted to Ning Yi's abilities and confidence, and they eventually evolve into a genuine couple. And as Ning's success becomes evident, Su Tang er's uncle and cousin change their attitude towards him and even begging for jobs in his, uh, in his shops, okay? <laughs> Um, so this show, um, reflects a prevailing mentality in neoliberal China, that is the idolization of success and the anxiety stemming from the potential failure to embody the entrepreneurial self. In this context, individuals are held responsible for their own destinies, self-fulfillment, and self-development. So success or chenggong has become the primary, if not the sole objective in life, leading to the emergence of successology, the chenggong xue, as a field of study in cyberspace. So practitioners in this area often offer crude or even immoral advice on achieving success through ingratiating oneself with superiors, and the outer maneuvering rivals. In this success-driven social environment, individuals lacking the resources, capacities, or social capital to attain success become anxious, striving individu individuals, to borrow Yan Yunxiang's term. Uh, this anxiety has significantly Im significant implications for masculinity as Zheng Tiantian points out, men possessing economic and political power are perceived as sexually potent, while those who have lost such power feel emasculated by marketing reforms in contemporary China. <laughs> A notable example of uh, such uh, Marginal masculinity is the internet forged male identity of Diao Si in, in recent years. Although Diao Si literally translates into male public hair, the term has gained popularity in cyberspace as a reference to losers or worthless men at the bottom of the social hierarchy. So many young men in China self identify with the label in a self depreciating manner. In public discourse and popular entertainment, Diao Si is often linked to the fantasy of dramatically reversing one's fortunes and altering one's fate overnight. That is Ni Xi. Right, so Ni Xi is a computer game slang derived from Japanese. It conveys not only the hope that every dog has its day, but also the neoliberal ethos of self-worth and self-improvement. Consistent with neoliberal subjectivity, this type of fantasy reflects <coughs> the desire for upward mobility among men with limited resources and opportunities, and paradoxically reinforces the dominant discourse of uh, masculinity. 
So the success story of Ning Yi serves as a good example of this, this type of fantasy. And another source of male anxiety is the empowerment of women resulting from China's economic growth. So for, for men, I mean, this is a, another source of anxiety. In post-Mao China, there has been a long-standing discourse suggesting that men are overshadowed and thus emasculated, emasculated by women who have become increasingly strong and powerful. So this anxiety has been and exacerbated uh, by the recent competitive environment, commonly referred to as rat race or nei right? Uh, especially for young people. So the exaggerated miserable condition of the living sons, living son-in-laws being bullied and dominated by their wives, families in a matrilocal locale reflects this type of uh, male uh, anxiety. So in my heroic husband, Ning Yi is sent to, for instance, is sent to a male virtuous academy, a Nan De Xue Yuan, as a form of a punishment for his misdeeds. And at this academy, natural local husbands are taught how to behave appropriately within their wives' families and how to perform household chores including uh, cleaning, needlework, cooking, and, and child care. So this uh, satirizes the real life emergence of the new, new De Ban courses on women's virtual in China, which has sparked considerable controversy. This revisal of gender hierarchy, however, is merely presented as a joking element. It becomes evident that at every critical juncture, the heroic husband resorts to his wit and the strategic uh, prowess to become to come to the aid of Sutar, rescuing her on numerous occasions and thwarting the malicious intentions of those who seek to exploit her. <laughs> so in this way, the show falls into the hackneyed hero rescuing the damsel in distress pattern, where the portrayal of strong female characters merely serves to emphasize the true dominance of their male counterparts. Um, and also this series adheres to a conventional motif frequently found in male-oriented online literature, that is to position Ning Yi, the, the male protagonist, as the focal point of numerous attractive young female characters who all display unwavering devotion and affection towards him. And these women willing to, uh, these women willing go to great uh, lengths to assist and support Ning Yi, embodying various archetypes that are prevalent in the male fantasy in popular culture. By incorporating elements that cater to both male and female audiences, the series successfully appeals to a broad demographic. It employs a delicate balance of gender role reversal as the comedic uh, device, while simultaneously adhering to familiar tropes that satisfy the expectations and desires of its readership. Um, lastly, I would like to um, talk a little bit about uh, readership. And uh, Metro Local Husband literature consistently secures top positions on various male channels of popular reading apps. So this is a, a uh, survey of the uh, readers of this type, this subgenre. The average age uh, is 41.4 years, with 81% being 30 years old or older. And uh, uh, although the majority of readers are male, there are still 27% of fans are female. And most of these readers are from small sized towns, <clears throat> often referred to as the third to fourth tire cities in China, making them grassroots consumers from the so-called thinking market of the Xia Chen Shutang. They typically read these novels during lunchtime and before bedtime, establishing a fast food reading pattern. So for them, it's like a 
fast food, really. And uh, this pattern influences novel's characteristics, which often feature shorter chapters with numerous pleasure points, the shuang dian. As a result, 42% of Metro Local Husband novels are less than 1 million characters in length. So this is in contrast to a much longer uh, serialization of romance and marriage novels in female channels, which have an average length of 3 million characters. The agro-themic uh, agro recommendations aim to cater to specific demographics of male readers whose tastes and emotion, emotional needs subsequently shape the narrative structure and character development in the stories. So this process results in affective transformations concerning male anxiety and uh, uh, masculinity. Um, for instance, here I have a quote from uh, Xiao, uh, Xiao Yao Zhishen, uh, whose name translates to uh, Carrie Scott. Uh, he's an amateur writer. So as I said, um, most of the creators of this type of content are uh, amateur writers or common people, ordinary people. And the essence of uh, matrilocal husband stories re re revolves around a man's journey to regain his self-esteem. So these narratives offer an es escape from the, the real world pressures that men face in their family and work lives. And in the neoliberal social context where Cheng Gong has become a hegemonic masculine ideal, fantasies about matrilocal husbands provide uh, respite for men who consider themselves less successful in, in real life. As a result, the protagonists in these tales find happiness through the restoration of lost self-esteem and the reinforcement of their central role in the, in the family. Um, so this is, the, this is the quote about his own um, living condition uh, in a small town in Henan uh, province. Okay, so this anxious sense of uh, powerlessness and uh, passiv passivity uh, permits the metro local husband stories crafted by, by this author. Set in specific plot contexts, these stories have been described as half tortures and half an ex exaggerating. Uh, initially, the metro local husband is often oppressed, even if he comes from a distinguished family. Um, nevertheless, the protagonist's identity reveal and the, the enemy's defeat should not occur too rapidly. So the protagonist must continually suppress his true identity for an extended period. So this is what we call the xian, xian nue hou shuang. And then during this painstaking process, readers endure similar blows and humiliations as in reality, yet they cannot help but eagerly await the climax. The frustration and suppression may span hundreds of chapters and uh, with these, the happy moments arriving later. So as uh, Xiao Yao Zhishen states, the more intense the pressure, the more happy the, explo the explosion will be. So subsequently, straightforward emotional uh, provocation and the continuing build, building up, build up of uh, um, exhilarating moments ensue. So in uh, a online, uh, on the online platform called the Zhihu, which is the Chinese equivalent to uh, Quora, uh, there's a question why men are so obsessed with uh, 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 metro local husband stories. And uh, one uh, internet user expresses sadness upon discovering that his father, an unremarkable man with unfulfilled aspirations, was listening to the audio book of a metro local husband narrative in solitude. So here is a, a translation of uh, uh, of, of his uh, answer, uh, which I think is a typical typical example of how you know the reader's emotions are uh, associated with the, the 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 stories. Okay, so uh, to summarize, um, 
in this talk, I argue that the democratization of narration has empowered ordinary people to share their perspectives, fantasies, and desires through the interactive prosuming, that is a production and con consuming uh, of a mediated culture. And algorithmic regulation in digital entertainment has given rise to the emergence of a pseudo history or flattened history, wherein historical tropes are reimagined and reconfigured to express emotions in a new liberalized society. In particular, new technologies of gender construction have attached new meanings and uh, affects to time-honored motifs and figures from the past. So this phenomenon both empowers women in a changing society and paradoxically uh, perpetuates male dominance, demonstrating the resilience of the patriarchy in Chinese society. Okay, so that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Professor Song, uh, for giving this uh, very interesting presentation. Uh, we've already received a, a number of questions. Uh, I'm going to uh, maybe select a few. So uh, we have uh, Freya Pence. Uh, she, uh, uh, um, so uh, this audience member is a master student in mm. development studies at SOAS. And uh, um, the questions raised are, <clears throat> do you think that grassroots men are more likely to be interested in the male wife's story? Are urban men less likely feel threatened by their wives or is something else going on? And, mm. she, uh, and then there's another part of the story. It's about um, the, the, the crisis of masculinity uh, going on in China now, uh, do you think mm. it, this crisis is different to the crisis in previous years or not? Hmm. Do you think there's a crisis oh, that's yes. going on in China at the moment, different? <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm not sure um, the previous, by previous years, which, um, uh, which period uh, is she referring to? Uh, uh, do you think that it serves as uh, or harms the new liberal agenda. Yeah. Um, well, there is the crisis of masculinity <laughs> in every society and uh, at every given time. And I think you are right that uh, the situation is changing. And uh, um, for instance, uh, if you are talking about uh, the early post Mao period, that is in early. Uh, 1980s, and the crisis of masculinity is uh, there is a widespread belief that women uh, have become too strong uh, during the Cultural Revolution, during Mao's revolution, and men are relatively threatened or you know uh, weakened by women's power, and also uh, compared with because uh, that, that's the starting years of the reform and opening up period. So uh, by comparing Chinese men with uh, Western men uh, or, or even Japanese men, and then, and then people feel that our men are uh, emasculated. They are, they are not masculine enough, okay? Um, so, 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 so this is the, uh, the, uh, in, the, in the 1980s. And then later with the development of reform and economic growth, and then uh, I think the crisis, um, has become more uh, materialist. That is, if you are not, uh, if you do not have enough money, right? If you do not have um, uh, enough financial uh, capacities, and then you are not regarded as uh, masculine enough. Okay. Um, so, so yeah, this is, this is a changing situation. So, and uh, back to your question, I, I think. Um, firstly, the grassroots men are not uh, exclusively from the countryside. They also, some of them are in the, in the cities. Um, but I, I think maybe one way to define them is uh, through their income, okay? So if, in, if, their, if their income is below certain uh, level and they are regarded as uh, grassroots, okay? 
or, or from the lawyer classes. And, and, and most of them uh, are from the rural area and also the small towns, small or remote cities, okay? Um, and uh, what's the other question? Um, uh, urban men feel less likely to feel threatened by their wives. <laughs> I think it's hard to say, okay? It's, a, it's different in every family. Um, but uh, I think economic situation uh, of uh, of the two of the couple, okay, of the wife's uh, family, uh, her parents' family, and also the man's parents' family. This is a determine a very important factor nowadays uh, to determine the power or status of the husband and wife in their family. I think I think this is very common in uh, in, in many families. Yeah. Okay, okay, we got a question from uh, Tian Ye Zitian. How can we analyze the phenomenon of gender reversal in this relationship, uh, especially the form, the format, and the ways to deliver this type? Like male somehow plays a housewife role, and a female mm. could do more rational decisions for the business or family. Uh, can mm. consider it as a progress of gender liberation. Uh, I think the audience member is referring to the heroic husband with this TV mm. show. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it is, it is a, a progress, yes, definitely. Uh, but um, this is not new. Uh, if, you, if you read the classical Chinese novel, uh, Xiu Ji, uh, Journey to the West, there's one chapter that uh, uh, Tang Sheng, the monk, and uh, his disciples traveled to a uh, state of uh, women, New York, women, women uh, land, and uh, all the the queen and the ministers, the the powerful uh, people are all female. Okay, and uh, uh, so I, I think this this type of fantasy, this type of imagination, existed for a long time. Um, so uh, I, I think for in, in this drama, in this uh, matrilocal local husband, my heroic husband, uh, definitely this is this, this uh, as I mentioned because the producer would like to cater to both male and female uh, audiences. Okay, and then um, this uh, uh, this plot of the male virtual academy, the Nan De Xuyuan, and also the reverse reversal of uh, you know uh, hierarchical positions of men and women definitely will make your female audience members happy right um, but at the same time as I mentioned this is represented as a joke okay uh, always just for comedic effect because in the end if you, if you watch that uh, uh, drama every time it is the man it is Ning Yi who rescues the woman or save the woman's family, okay? Or uh, he uses his uh, modern knowledge and, uh, and uh, skills to, uh, to bring uh, prosperity and wealth to the Su family. Um, so that is why I argue that ultimately nothing has been changed, nothing changed in this, uh, male-female hierarchical relationship. So it perpetuates male dominance in society. But the, why I'm talking about uh, algorithmic uh, uh, forces is because I think the producer is very clever because he's trying, they're trying to uh, cater to both male and female audiences, uh, desire and taste. Okay, good. Uh, mm. We got a question from Charlie Allen, and then uh, Charlie is a master student in our MA Chinese Studies at SOAS. Um, so do you think that the CCP's mm. push to create an idealized Han Chinese man, uh, for example, men not wearing earrings on TV, wearing no makeup, etc., and uh, modern metrosexuality, so this kind of a state push, does this state push lead to mm. the rise of the metro local husband stories? Mm, I can't see direct link between the two. 
Um, but I, I think you are right that uh, uh, the government is trying to uh, masculinize their uh, male citizens, especially the younger generation. So I have written uh, an article uh, about this little fresh meat phenomenon and also the government's backlash uh, to uh, against this, this uh, um, aesthetic. And, but I, I wouldn't say it's a purely Han uh, masculinity because I think for them, it's a... Um, um, just the masculine and effeminate type of uh, of male images, and they think that the effeminate type of image is harmful for the uh, virility of the nation, and also for the younger generation, especially the boys. Uh, I think that is their mentality, the government's mentality. But I I can't see direct link uh, between. Uh, the metro local husband and the government's effort to mascul masculinize uh, men. Uh, because as I said, the producers, the creators of uh, uh, metro local husbands are not official, uh, are not from the officials, right? They are amateur writers. They are ordinary people uh, in everyday life. So I, I uh, you, you could say that maybe they coincide with the state agenda, but I don't think they have any any uh, mission or uh, any tasks from the government to create images like this. Yeah. Okay. I think there's a follow-up question on grassroots men uh, from an anonymous mm. attendee. So with grassroots, this, this definition, um, do you mean grassroots uh, refer to social status, economic status, or both. In other words, does a low-income man from an urban, highly educated background count as a grassroots in your definition? Hmm, that's a good question. Yeah, the low-income man from urban... Um, educated. Well, I, I would say this cases would be rare. If you're highly educated and then your income wouldn't be too low uh, in uh, in China. Um, uh, so yes, but I think uh, basically I uh, for grassroots, I think the primary standard uh, of defining the grassroots is uh, their economic situation, their income. Uh, but I also take into consideration regional difference, that is where they reside. So people who live in big cities are supposed to be uh, more elite than those uh, from small towns or re remote areas. So regional difference uh, is also a factor to be considered. Uh, but yes, I think the primary uh, uh, factor would be economic uh, income, right? That is the, the, the what I mean by grassroots, yeah. Okay, and uh, now we have a PhD student from University of Leeds, mm. uh, Yan Tao Sun. Um, the mm. question is about, uh, okay, so uh, uh, Yan Tao studies East Asian literature and the culture. And the question mm. is about the story mode of male-oriented web fiction, I guess, Nanping, Nanping Xiaoshuo. Uh, you mm. um, so why we rarely see the exclusive romantic relationships in male-oriented web fiction compared to the mm. pure love stories, which is quite common, commonly seen in the female-oriented. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, and I, I think I have explained this in the in my presentation because it's a male fantasy, and this is this is a major difference between the. Uh, these uh, stories created by common people, by amateur writers, and those who are from the official channel, okay? Uh, because this, this pattern, one man and this many women, this is not encouraged. This is not permitted by the, the official, from the official perspective, right? Uh, but for men, for ordinary men, the, this is their, in, in Chinese, there's a term yi yi, which is yi yin, right? This is their daydream, this is their fantasy. So that is why this type of story are liked by uh, the so-called grassroots man, because this is the, 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 in their projection, right? They project themselves to be the protagonist. They're, they're, they're dreaming of uh, being surrounded by, you know, 
a, a group of attractive young women. And um, yes, but I, yeah, I agree with you. And very interestingly, these are uh, seldomly, seldomly seen in uh, female oriented stories in, in China. And I think this is, this is a very, very interesting uh, phenomenon. Yeah. Maybe can you clarify uh, about the authorship? Because we know some female writers create mm. female boys' love stories. But of yes, course, yes. type of stories uh, are the writers mainly male writers or women? Or women can also create patriarchal marriage stories? I, I, I think most of them are men. Okay, yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so now we have a question from uh, Huang Zhou Jun, a PhD mm -hmm. student from City University of Hong Kong. Um, the question is about the reception from the feminist perspective in Chinese mm -hmm. online community. Uh, I guess it's mm -hmm. about this type of novel. How do feminist readers <laughs> receive? Ah, yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, I think uh, uh, from online uh, for, uh, online forums, we can find lots of uh, uh, comments, and some of the some of them are from the, the so-called feminist perspective, and there are you know strong critiques of uh, stories like this. Um, uh, definitely, you can you can find them, uh, but but I I think because these stories are created for not. By write, professional writers or playwrights, you know, so I don't think they would care about you know how uh, feminist readers or female readers respond to the stories. I think that, that that's not their um, the focus of their attention. And um, the the sole aim, the, the goal of creating stories like this is for for profit, right? So this is a profit driven uh, endeavor. So um, that's why we can seldom find response to the feminist criti criticism of, uh, uh, of, of, of this type of stories. Yeah. Uh, the next question is from Iona Turkin, a student mm. at UCL. Um, mm. The question is really about the zui shu genre and the other literature that focus on male identity crisis. Uh, so does this type of literature perpetuate the creation of an incel community of men highly critical mm. of women and not just of the current liberal neoliberal status quo mm, i'm not sure why highly critical of women like i think uh, the focus is really about uh, does this type of literature contribute to creating an incel community of mm. men mm -hmm. mm. Yes, um, but um, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say. Uh, I, I mean, they're not critical for women, right? So if they're critical of women, then they wouldn't um, make the man the focus uh, of uh, uh, or the focal point of uh, many many women. Uh, so if you watch the drama, if you watch the web drama, and uh, uh, and and uh, some other uh, stories. I think uh, you would agree with me that this is a highly um, heterosexual, and uh, uh, and the, the female characters are playing important roles in these stories, um, and and it reflects male fantasy about heterosexual romance. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, the next question is from Yu Kyung Ju Zavaroni, uh, my colleague mm. from East Asian Department. And she is a lecturer in Korean language at the SOAS. Oh. Um, so the, her question is really about uh, Pan Asian culture phenomenon. Uh, mm. So, as a fan of K dramas, I wonder if the changes in male characters and the images in Chinese dramas are specific to the context of a contemporary China. Do you think mm. it would become more general changes that we would be able to find in East Asian dramas, considering many shared social, culture, and historical elements? Uh, for example, I often found uh, interesting changes in male characters in recent Korean dramas. Uh, for example, the male character characters have a display different politeness, and the female maybe mm. feminized languages. Mm. 
in recent years. Yeah, so um, I, yeah, I, I, I agree. Yeah, so there's an in, increasing interaction uh, between East Asian cultures in terms of masculinity and uh, uh, romance. Um, so, and, and also I think uh, 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 online novels and TV dramas in China has been significantly influenced by uh, K-pop, by Korean dramas. I'm not sure how much the Chinese uh, productions influence impact on the Korean uh, popular culture, but I'm sure that Korean popular culture has inserted very significant influence on Chinese uh, popular culture. Like I, I've recently published an article on the romantic pattern of uh, older woman, younger man, the, the Jie Di Lian. And uh, I think this shows very obvious uh, influence from the, the recent, uh, the, K, the, the, the um, Han Liu, the, the K, Korean wave, right? Uh, that is the, and also this, this is in line with the empowerment of women, right? So in the past, I mean, even a few years ago, you cannot imagine that. So the women if in a romantic drama, a woman is uh, uh, more than 10 years older than the man. I think for many audience, they would not uh, be able to accept that. But nowadays it has become a trend, uh, something like a, 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 a mainstream trend in Chinese TV dramas. That is, the woman is much much older, and also uh, enjoys a much higher social status than the man. Um, so this is a again, if you if you call it a reversal of gender hierarchy, I think this is also a good example of how you know gender hierarchy has been reversed, and uh, and this type of romantic story, and it, you could say it's a pan East Asian because there, there are very obvious Korean and Japanese influence on, uh, on this pattern of romantic love. Um, yes, so, so I think this uh, you know, uh, inter-influence between East Asian cultures is a very, very interesting and, uh, and, and the fruitful direction for, uh, for, this, uh, for this type of study, yeah. Next question is from Xingyue Zhang, a PhD student from Hong Kong University. Oh, um, so this is our student. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the student is currently studying female-oriented internet literature, but it doesn't mm. have much knowledge about the Zui Xu genre. Uh, however, mm. uh, uh, so Xingyue has heard about the, a typical trope, uh, mm. the so-called ban zhu chi lao hu, to play dumb, mm. to take advantage mm. of someone. Mm. So can we understand uh, the desires reflected in the zui xu genre? Uh, how can we understand the desires reflected in those novels have uh, evolved mm. over the years? And how can mm. we see the positive side uh, if there's any of such narrative? Mm. Um, I'm not sure what does she mean by the positive side. Uh, what what is positive or negative? I think it's hardly to it's, it's hard to uh, to say that. Uh, but you, you are right. It's, this this uh, term the ban zhu chi lao hu. This is a, again a very common plot in uh, this type of stories. That is the, the 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 true identity or the true capacity of the 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 hero of the male protagonist has been hidden. At, at first, okay, and and no one knows about his true uh, capacities and, until the at the cru crucial moment, and then everybody to everybody's surprise, mm -hmm. he reveals his own identity or abilities. Uh, this is a very common pattern in this type of stories, and it shows the uh, fantasy, right, of. Uh, uh, writers and readers of this type of stories. That is, uh, I'm a true hero, it's just that you do not recognize me, right? You still do not recognize my, my, my abilities. Um, so I think this could be just part of this fantasy, you know, about how uh, men who, are, who feel that they are less successful in real life are dreaming about being recognized, being 
uh, worshipped by admired by his wife and his wife's family uh, so yeah so i think this is a very good observation and uh, uh, it's, it's an uh, important element right in the storylines uh, of, of this subgenre yeah, the next question is from Dr. Yahya Baza. Given that the most writers in Chinese novels are men, as you mentioned earlier, mm. how, uh, how can we measure the influence of Chinese feminism in the modern Chinese literature? Um, no, I'm, I'm not saying that um, most writers of Chinese novels are men. I'm just... Um, uh, I was answering Xiaoning's question about this type of stories, uh, this type of novel, that is the Zhui Xu Wen, the matrilocal husband subgenre. I think uh, most of them are written by men, uh, or the majority of them are written by men. But there are still many female writers, as Xiaoning just mentioned, the BL subgenre. Uh, or the female channel, uh, female-oriented uh, uh, type of stories. So, uh, and there are growing influence of female writers and female readers and consumers on Chinese popular culture. And uh, so, again, the the the, the influence the impact of Chinese feminism that would be a too big question. That is a um, maybe we we do not have enough time to. Uh, go to the details of this uh, this issue. The next question is a specific specifically about uh, the plot, the trope uh, within the narratives. Uh, it's from an anonymous attendee. And um, so mm. the question is really about the story trope. Who are the most common villains, and the value they represent? Um, who are the people that is most likely to receive the Dalian treatment in the story? Oh, Do okay. you think this is a response more of one's own frustration or a criticism of those values? Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> the, the villains are the wives, relatives, the wives, the family members, and, and, and um, in most of the cases, it's the wives, brother, brothers or cousins. Uh, they are the targets of the Dalian. So the Dalian is just like a slap in the face for, for those people. And interestingly, they are also men, right? So this, this shows men's anxiety. So I'm, I'm, I'm saying that this is an expression of male anxiety because they are worrying about uh, belittled by other men, by the wife's family, okay? They, are, uh, they care too much about how the wife and the wife's family um, value, recognize their value, right? And so very interesting. I think this is a, just a reflection of male anxiety in, uh, in, in real life. Uh, because as I said uh, previously, that uh, uh, the wife's economic, the economic situation of the wife's, wife's family could have an impact on the position of the husband, even if the husband uh, lives in the, in, in the wife's uh, household. And then I think their family background, their economic situation uh, will have a direct impact on the position of a husband and wife in this family. So this story, this plot line uh, reflects the deep seated uh, anxiety and frustration, you know, about the economic situation, economic position of the husband in, uh, in, in, in the family. Yeah. Okay, so next one is a follow-up question by Charlie Allen. Um, so male writers stereotypically write with a desire for success in terms of wealth and in terms of wealth, uh, but the female yeah. writers, in contrast, their success is measured by love mm. and marriage, not wealth. Yes, 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 uh, uh, yeah, I agree. Yes, in many stories, yes, this, this is the situation, yes. Okay, that's a very simple uh, uh, question and a direct answer, great. So the next mm. one is from an anonymous writer. Thank mm. you for the fascinating lecture. 
Well, the flattening of history coincides with the flattening of reimagined characters, or will the result be the opposite? Why? Mm, the flattening of history coincides with the flattening of reimagined characters. Um, I, I wouldn't say it's a flattening of reimagined characters. I would say these characters are reimagined with new meanings and new position, new uh, emotions. Um, because I, I, uh, I don't understand, you know, what uh, the flattening of reimagined re characters mean. Um, what I'm interested in is that a group of a number of uh, tropes, historical tropes, have been reimagined and reconfigured in this uh, uh, algorithmic time. And uh, uh, they have been separated from the original historical context. And uh, they have been imagined in, in a way that they reflect the new liberal the situation of uh, people in a new liberalized uh, society. So apart from I'm talking, I talked about uh, uh, concubines in the imperial concubines and matrilocal husband. Another example uh, I'm interested in, but I I, I still uh, don't have the, the the chance to explore on this um, uh, topic is eunuchs, right? Taijian eunuchs, and so the image of eunuchs have been negative. Uh, throughout history, uh, from traditional Chinese literature to uh, the martial arts fiction, wuxia xiaoshuo, or martial arts film, you can see all the eunuchs. Well, I would say 99% of the eunuchs are villains, right? Because um, they are the, the negative characters in, 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 in the stories. But recently, uh, in online fiction and also web dramas, there is a trend of uh, eunuch. Uh, stories or the Tai Jianwen, whereby eunuchs has become have become the protagonist of romantic love. Okay, and eunuchs display desirable masculinity and are fancied by the, by maids, palace maids, and even princess uh, in the in the palace. So I think this is a very this is different from the traditional or the historical trope. Um, so I, I would call it a reimagination. This is reimagined, but with new meaning, okay? Because they they are expressing a so-called progressive attitude towards sex and gender and romance. And so in these stories, the eunuchs are reluctant to have a relationship with, the, for instance, the princess. So he will say, "Oh, I'm a eunuch. I'm a castrated man, and I'm not able to, you know." Dating with you, but the, the girl would say, "Oh, I, I doesn't. I, I wouldn't care, right? I wouldn't care because even two women can be together, and then why not? Uh, why a castrated man cannot be uh, have a relationship with the with the women? So this is a in line with the LGBTQ uh, or queer uh, trend of uh, understanding gender and sex in a new way." Um, so this is another case that we could explore, and and, and there are many other cases like this. So uh, motifs or images from traditional literature, from Chinese uh, history, has been uh, borrowed and uh, associated with uh, um, unpredictable new meanings, new associations in this. Um, uh, Time of digital entertainment, so this is this is what I mean by flattened history and you know reimagined uh, historical uh, images. Yeah, that's very fascinating. Such an interesting uh, study uh, in uh, example. Yeah, thank you. So the the next question is a a general question. Uh, do you mm. think the rise of right wing power? is a result of the increase of women empowerment and so the emasculation of men? Hmm, I, I'm, I wonder what uh, uh, does, uh, does he or she mean by right-winged, the rise of right-winged power. 
that um, uh, talking about China or the West, and 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 what, what's the what's the yeah, definition? Yeah, the question doesn't specify that, but maybe we can link this question with uh, Freya Pence. Another question from uh, Priya. Uh, there are aspects of masculinity seem to mirror many seen in the USA among rural populations oh. too, especially Trump oh. supporters. Have you studied mm. or read anything about these parallels? No, no. Um, no, I haven't. This is very interesting. Um, uh, it's just when, when I uh, was read, writing my book, uh, Televising Chinese-ness, there's one part of my book focusing on uh, nationhood and manhood, nationalism and masculinity. And one of the reviewers uh, mentioned that this is not exclusive to China. Uh, in in U.S. and he used the, the case of Trump, you know, in, in USA and in uh, contemporary West, we can also see a parallel uh, phenomenon that is nationalism is closely linked to this masculinity. So the, the the white boys, right? And I find this very interesting, very very important. So I incorporated uh, that into my my book. And yes, yeah, so, so thank you for, for, for raising this uh, issue. And I, I will spend some time to, to study that. And if I find a parallel, I think that would be a very, very uh, important breakthrough. Okay, uh, so now we only have time for one more question. So this one is hmm, from an anonymous uh, attendee. As women become more financially independent, how do hmm. you think that will impact future gender roles? Uh, for example, women don't need a man to provide for them anymore, mm. as they can provide for themselves. Mm. Yes, yes, definitely. Yes, I think this is a global phenomenon, and uh, I, I agree with you. Uh, but at the same time, as I mentioned, there's also resilience of patriarchal uh, ideology, um, resilience of uh, the hierarchical, you know, gender relations. And I think it will take a long time for us to uh, totally change that. And as, uh, as I just mentioned, you know, the new trend, for instance, in Chinese TV drama is to feature a, an older woman uh, dating with a younger man. And the woman is normally uh, the boss, right? Uh, executive in a company or a rich uh, woman and the man is his, her subordinate. Uh, so this is a very new pattern. I mean, a few years ago, you wouldn't be able to find uh, this type of a romance in mainstream uh, depiction of, uh, of romantic love. But now it has become uh, like mainstream in Chinese TV drama and web drama. So I think this is a big, this is a very uh, significant change. Uh, in the representation of gender and, and romance. So yes, I definitely agree with you that with the economic empowerment, empowerment of women, we will see um, increasing improvement of women's uh, status in both uh, real life and in uh, representations. Yes, thank you. Well, uh, now we are approaching 2.30 in London and 9.30 hmm. p.m. in Hong Kong. So yes, we yes. have to wrap up this session. But thank you so much, Professor Song, for this fascinating talk. Uh, I would also like to thank our audience members for your active engagement. I hope to see you soon at our seminar events. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Xiaoning. And thank you, everyone, for coming.